All right, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Alek Ascura. Thank you very much for, uh, I know you're extremely busy these days, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, Aleka is, uh, as probably I've already related to you last week with emails, is the head of training and performance management uh, of the Eurobank group. Not Eurobank, but the entire group in Greece and in other, um, in, in other countries where Eurobank has been present over the years. Uh, she's, uh, I'm going to say this because I thoroughly believe it, she's, she's the best in what she does in Greece and not only. And I think I'm very qualified to say that because we had the chance over the years to work very, very closely uh, together. Uh, she's going to say about your story, right? Uh, starting from Greece, uh, going to New York, from computer science to HR. But I'll tell you three things that are really exciting for me to listen here. Uh, often, when we talk about creativity in a business school, people will say, I'm in HR. How can I be creative? Or I work in a bank. How fun can that be? Exactly. Now, uh, there's someone here who actually has done uh, many creative things, making people more creative and having more fun environments. Uh, she's going to, to uh, present these projects along many interesting elements of your personal story. So uh, it's a delight to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. First of all, let me thank Babis. <laughs> <laughs> for giving me this opportunity. And honestly, when uh, I received his call, my first uh, reaction was positive then immediately negative. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, OK, uh, I can share with you my professional experience towards creativity. But I asked myself, am I really a creative person in my personal life? And the answer was no, probably not. I'm a very uh, result-oriented, very down-to-earth person. And I think or my perception is that I don't have time to be creative. But here I am tonight, and I would like to confess that uh, Babis gave me a great opportunity to go way back in my life, in my life <coughs> journey, let's say, and look really hard uh, to find issues and accomplishments that, that I can relate to creativity. So let me begin with a few biographical elements so you can get to know me better. And then I will try to share with you two creativity stories. <laughs> so I was born in a small town, Xilokastro, quiet and very beautiful at the time. I finished the local high school. And my dreams back then were very common, quiet, and small. I really loved two things, math and gymnastics. So I was preparing myself for the national exams. I wanted to enter to the gymnastic academy in Athens. Well, a few months before uh, high school graduation, an unexpected proposition knocks on my door. My older brother was getting married to his Greek-American girlfriend and moved to New York. You can imagine a plane ticket was waiting for me if I wanted. <laughs> I could live the dream, the dream I never let myself dream. So I decided to work hard and live the dream. And imagine me from Xilocastro City to New York City, and from local high school to NYU. I chose to study in NYU, a very expensive, private, but excellent school. Yes, I didn't find uh, <laughs> our picture. <laughs> so Actually, we, were together, but we didn't meet there, yes. Uh, I, my immediate family could not help me with uh, tuitions, so I decided that I wanted to live the dream, so I found a job in a supermarket as a cashier and paid the tuitions by myself. I chose the school Art of S and Science. As I said before, I loved math. So computers were the science of the future at the time. 
So for the following years, I'm a student, a cashier in a supermarket, married, and have a house to take care. 24 hours were really, really not enough. Looking back in those years in the Big Apple, I can honestly say that it was a unique experience, an unforgettable experience, which gave me so many ways, gave me so much. I ended up to be so strong and so determined to succeed, but also with an adorable baby <laughs> and a divorce by the age of 26. So a few years after my graduate, few months after uh, uh, graduation, I decided to return home together with my daughter in Athens. <laughs> From the Big Apple in Athens. While I was interviewing for a computer analyst job here in Athens, the headhunter in the first interview offered me a job in his organization and he started to describe another sort of position which involved the function of recruitment, market research and training. So I did a rather an impulsive decision to change direction because this thing attracted me from the first minute. And I will call this experiment number two because going to New York was for me experiment number one. Since uh, I'm working in the wider area of human resources, and I'm today, as Bobby said, uh, head of training and performance management for Eurobank Group, having more than 25 years of experience in the area of training, which proved to be the ultimate fit. A faction, let's say, it was made for me, and I was made for it. I love my job, as you, as you, as you can understand. So to go back to our creativity theme, when I received the call, I was really troubled, because I realized that I'm really two different people, as far as creativity, of course, is concerned. In my personal life, I think inside the box, I'm down to earth. I don't have ideas flowing over my head. On the other hand, in my professional life, I strive to be creative, innovative. I'm thinking out of the box. I'm thinking innovative solutions. I don't, I don't want to talk about the word problems. When a new idea, a new project, uh, when I think of a new project, I'm getting very excited. When an innovative idea comes to me, I see colors in my head. I dream only the solutions. I, I dream the outcome. Well, the word problem does not exist. So I decided to share with you two of my most uh, recent initiatives that turned out to be successful projects that affected change. The first one. Ah, I suppose to computer go and human resources <laughs> come. I forgot this, I'm sorry. So the first project, it's the Fun at Work project. It was a time when my team, uh, 15 people, sorry, 15 people working under five supervisors with different tasks and goals, was worried about future <coughs> developments. Some team members very tired with everyday tasks, you know, in human resources, who have very tasks to do every day. And some others having difficulty cooperating with each other. Till then, I had tried everything by the book, management technique there is. Personal coaching, job rotation, counseling, mentoring, you name it, <coughs> nothing. So during one meeting, one of my five direct reports said, oh, I wish there is something we can put all of our colleagues to work together at the same time to face difficulties, but 
work side by side for the same team goal. Wow, I thought, there is a problem with no solution. Is that possible? So I kept thinking, how can I mingle everyone in a project in, to do something, to work, all of them, to have them work together in a project they would all like. So not before long, the Fun at Work project was born in my mind. I gathered the whole team one afternoon and I created a brainstorming session where I asked them anonymously to express their need towards our everyday work in the office. As you can understand, I wanted to gain buy-in for the project. So, what surprise? Almost everybody, the majority of the team members, expressed their need to have fun, more fun in the office, at the office. <coughs> so, I suggested we form a team that will take us there. We had team members volunteering for the project. They chose their own project leader. They made a detailed action plan for the following months to come. They met every week, either at the office or at their home, to discuss their ideas, their, their suggestions. They come to me whenever they felt they need help. I would support them in every step of the way. And for all team members, the Fun at Work project was one of their main goal in their performance evaluation. The purpose of the project, first, to improve work climate, to reduce stress, to solve problems in a positive way, to be more creative, more innovative, more energetic in the office. I don't want to tire you with m many details. I would like to show you some pictures of the deliverables. So, this included, they create, they design a questionnaire to find everybody's taste and preferences. They organize a wine testing visit, group discussions, group presentations, cooking sessions in my kitchen for everyone. Photography sessions, uh, you know, uh, everybody will bring a photo from summer vacation, photo when he was a baby, etc. A dinner out and uh, many, many things to change the mood in the office, music, decorations. You know, I was delighted to see this project succeed and affected everybody in the office. The outcome, stress was reduced. People start to working with each other with a friendlier and a more cooperative uh, way. They were productive. Many of them became friends and creativity was boosted because everything that they proposed, it was very, very innovative. And this project went on for almost <coughs> one year. So the outcome and the lessons learned for me from uh, the Fun at Work project was first, there is always a solution to any given problem as far as we think out of the box. Second, in the workplace, if you let people ex experiment, try new ideas, uh, choose innovative solutions, the results might surprise you. So that it was a real project, how we can have more fun at the office. Okay, so to go to the next project, I will tell you a story. It was uh, spring of 2011. 30 senior managers, senior executives of our bank 
were participating in a leadership development program with Alba. I don't remember if Babis was teaching uh, that day, one of the modules. And during a lunch break, one of my colleagues turns and says to me, Aleka, you are doing so many things for Eurobank staff, so many management and leadership development programs, job-related programs, but right now we need something else. With everything is happening, with the financial crisis, we need guidance. I asked him you know, to, to say a little bit more what, what did he mean? What did he mean? And he said, and I quote, one of my subordinates told me last week that his wife lost her job and they have to take their kids from private school and away from their friends. And he asked for advice. And he said, I could not say anything. So right now, I, I don't know if you can help, but we need a different training program that can help us go through this situation. And the interesting part, uh, part was that this colleague of mine was working in the Treasury Department. I don't know if you know what Treasury Department means. Everybody with figures and numbers, nothing else. So from that moment, I kept asking myself, how can I help? What options did I have? And then I remember one friend of mine, a very dear friend, had sent me a link <coughs> regarding positive psychology, which I didn't have the time to look it up yet. So the first thing I did Monday morning when I returned to my office is to visit it. And all of a sudden, I open a window to a different world, the world of positive psychology. I started researching in the internet and I was overwhelmed with all the information I gathered. So the idea of designing a training program in our department for all bank employees, a program that could help them deal with their everyday difficulties in their professional and personal life, was born in my mind. So I decided to share my dream, my idea, with my R&D team. And I have to tell you here that uh, in Eurobank, in the training department, we have an uh, R&D team of uh, very highly qualified, uh, innovative, creative minds, I can say. And I ask them to do their own research and answer to the question if we can really design a training program that would give tools for everyone, to all bank employees, the same tools to use to manage change, to manage negativity, to handle difficulties that they face in their everyday life. You can imagine the questions I asked, they asked. I don't know, probably you are thinking the questions too. Is an audience for a program li like this in a bank? Will our uh, organization support such a different approach? A program that stands out of every category, not a management or leadership development, not knowledge or skills to build. A program that it will cover only personal needs. Well, if I want something, in my professional life, definitely, <laughs> I will do it. We, g we got down into business and we designed the life skills program. A program that got such a word of mouth that everybody knows about it in the bank and everybody is talking about it. Up to now, we have more than 1,200 participations in this program. The Life Skills Program, it is based in the work of uh, Martin Seligman and Tan Tal Ben-Sahar. And it covers all the latest research regarding positive psychology. 
For example, one of the activities refers to the different life stances that we all choose to live our lives by. For instance, my life stance is that the one of the rat race. Because I'm very goals and accomplishments oriented, I'm running one race after the other. Sometimes it feels that I am in a constant race, not with others, against myself. And I can definitely say that I really, really enjoy the success at the finishing line, but usually I don't enjoy the ride. And the ultimate stance or goal is to achieve your goals, but at the same time to enjoy the ride. And now you may think that this is quite hard, how we can do that. Well, if someone can really understand how our uh, marvelous mind works, then someone can really change a lot of things. Because according to positive psychology, our life is determined by the facts we are facing by 10%, and by the way we handle them by 90%. Therefore, in our program we say it is all about brain work. So uh, the journey towards the creation of the life skills program was more than excited. It was the best month I had in the job, in my work. The program was embraced by everybody in the bank, colleagues, managers, HR people, and it made me and my team feel really very, very proud. But it, it made something else for me. I could say it changed my life, but this is, you know, big words. But it changed the way I think. Because I realized that my job became my comfort zone. It provided me with a safe psychological space to experiment with being passionate, uh, innovative, vibrant. But I realized also that constantly I was devoting myself to others and not to myself. So I decided, experiment number three, you might call it, that the next creative thing I will do this time, it will be personally for me, as a sole receiver. Because I want to do it with all my heart and enjoy every minute of it. So finally, as I said through uh, my story, creativity <laughs> is about taking risks, thinking out of the box, thinking differently, choose solutions with colors for every given problem. But I think it's something more. And this is uh, about being curious at all time. As uh, Leo Burnett said, curiosity about life in all of its aspects is, is the secret of great creative people. Okay. Let me see, do we have any questions for Aleka? I certainly have, please. A uh, very striking point in your presentation was that you said in your personal, personal life you are not very creative, while on your business life you are very creative. Uh, I was wondering, have you considered maybe the fact that you are creative in your personal life but you don't realize it, or is it the other way around? I mean, maybe you were forced in your work life to be creative. Okay. Well, first of all, I, uh, I'm not forced in my uh, professional life to be creative. This is something that uh, comes 
from inside me. Uh, anytime they give me a project, uh, they ask me for uh, uh, a solution. When I hear a new need, then honestly, I have ideas flowing over my head. I'm thinking so many different things that we have to do, and I never, never, never want to do the same things over and over again. Well, because I love my, my job so much, and I was devoted so much to my job for so many hours, probably, as I said in the beginning, I didn't have the time in my personal life to be creative. Or I didn't know that I needed it. But after the creation of the life skills program, or life skills program, I realized that I need this in my personal life too. So right now, I'm in a process of changing a lot of things in the way I, I see my personal life. Um, thank you for your sincerity and frankness. I, I, I want to ask two questions. I work in a bank, not here, back home. Okay. The concept of fun at work, having a kitchen in a bank. Not in the bank. Okay. I invite them Okay. in my yeah. home. Okay, in the home. <laughs> I invite them. So uh, how, okay, from what you explained, how did you create fun at work as in uh, the bank environment? <laughs> well, because uh, I was thinking all those things happened right within the company, so maybe you created it. So I wanted to see how we could, I could adopt it or something like that. Uh, we decided that we needed to have more fun at work. We had so many things to do. Usually in my department, uh, the, the tasks, the goals we have, and the goals I create for my team are more than enough. So I really understood that they needed something that, that, that they will make them feel better every day at the office. So the people that they had all these problems, uh, as I said before, having difficulties to cooperate with each other, they formulate a team. And this team work together and bring suggestions of how we can, fun, we can have fun at the office. So they propose all these activities. And I said yes almost to everyone. When they offered to uh, cook in the office, of course, that was very difficult because we didn't have a kitchen to do all this. And they proposed that they would bring food from their home and we can eat you know, uh, homemade uh, uh, cooking in the office. So I said, OK, would you like to come to my house? I can give you my kitchen, and everybody can uh, cook. And so we did. And the fact was that uh, I, uh, I renovated my house, and that happened almost a month and a half in my new kitchen <laughs> after the renovation. Well, usually when uh, uh, we're working with my team and uh, we exchange ideas and we ask each other how can we deal with this specific need, uh, then honestly I have my ideas flowing over my head. I I'm, start, I'm starting to think different things of how can we be more creative in any different approach. Well, together, for example, uh, with uh, Babis, after the um, uh, leadership development program we did for the senior management, uh, Babis had an idea to design uh, another <laughs> course, the biography course. So it was a very out of the box course, having so many different activities that I don't think that any other bank or other organization in Greece participated in such of activities. No one was as crazy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but let me let me just build on that. I just I'm just trying to uh, just uh, when you when you go to people and you say, well, let's do something more fun, something. Uh, then you mention they come back and their energy goes up. And I'm I, I'm wondering what is it that happens during these these um, those time uh, time lags? 
Is it the fun? Is it that they connect to one another in a more they personal way? Is yes. Is it uh, that they do they're doing something different? No, they connect uh, uh, to each other in a more personal way be because uh, during the months that they worked for this project, as I said, they met many, many times in different homes, <coughs> not always at the office. <coughs> so they became friends. Uh, and all the ideas and the suggestions uh, uh, for uh, us to to do from uh, for this project uh, was to having fun. Okay, we work, we have our tasks, we have our goals, and but let's have fun too. Okay. And I think that was it. Yes. It's about the fun project. Yes. You have said that uh, you said that they lasted one year. Yes, right? almost one year. Yes. Uh, don't you think that it should be on a continuous basis? Have <laughs> fun. Definitely yes, but uh, as you know, the last couple of years uh, in the banks, in the financial environment, everything has changed. Well, uh, in, in 2011, uh, Alpha Bank was ready to uh, have a, um, a takeover <laughs> of Eurobank. <laughs> then that was <laughs> over. Then Ethniki came. Uh, the deal was over. Uh, then, you know, all the, all the, the history. So uh, that was one of the reasons that uh, this project uh, finished at the end of the year. But uh, I think you should try it. It works. Were there any examples of having fun actually at work exactly. uh, rather than preparing all these activities? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, uh, they, um, they choose music that we can hear, decorations for the office. So you redecorate somehow the office? Or uh, not, not redecorate the whole office, but a uh, few things. Uh, they organized, uh, you know, uh, five or six people every day to have lunch together. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, you know, to order fruit, uh, to order uh, uh, food from outside, you know, little things that they made the difference. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that uh, if you give to people freedom yes. and some encouragement, they may come back with innovative solutions that may surprise you. And I would imagine that probably has also is related to who are, to who these people are, right? It goes back to selection. And since you, you know that uh, very well, it's, it's, it's something, it's an activity. Um, wh what type of elements would you look if you can just give advice to these folks in terms of uh, choosing people, recruiting people, in order to be more innovative, but also to contribute more, um, say, to uh, more engaging or uh, more playful uh, culture? Well, uh, for, for many, many years, I'm not in uh, the area of recruitment, but I can tell you what I look, if I would like to hire someone in the training department, first of all, I would like to see a face that smiles. Uh, I, I I like to see people that they ask questions. People that uh, they would like to uh, to get to know new things. That they don't afraid to take risks, to to try different things in the job. This is something uh, very very important for me. You make it sound like Google. Why? Because it does. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just an observation. Um, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, it sounds like you are uh, substantially increasing year by year or project by project the uh, social footprint of the company. Uh, so you should be also uh, one of the best uh, in-house persons for the communications department. So, uh, I mean, in terms of CSR, maybe, or something like that. And I was wondering, why don't uh, more and more companies uh, absorb this part of uh, corporate social responsibility in the HR departments, and they prefer to leave the communication departments do most of the work? I cannot really answer that, because uh, what is happening in uh, my division it's something that I can decide, and I have uh, the management team to support me, and I can do a lot of things and different things and innovative things. 
I don't think that it's the same for every other uh, department, training department. Mostly, as you know, training departments, they do um, everyday tasks regarding training programs, find a provider, um, you know, th things that uh, they're okay, but uh, they don't make your day. So uh, what I try to do in my department is to have fun and enjoy the work we do. So every year we design two, three, four different training programs, in-house development. And that gives uh, to our people the opportunity to develop themselves, to see how many things we can do uh, if we are devoted to a subject, to a goal, to a dream. Would you say that you, yeah, that you had uh, countable results in some of the projects? I mean, in terms of productivity, maybe, apart from people being more... <coughs> yes, uh, of course we can say that, but then we, we, will, we will have to discuss about uh, programs that have to do with selling skills, customer service, uh, leadership development, because the programs we've done, we, we see that people uh, gain so much. But uh, the things that are I, I really liked, and I choose to discuss uh, with you tonight, two projects, that they didn't have to do with productivity. But let me just follow up on that. I mean, there are some things you do uh, to, to achieve some kind of impact that is measurable. And there are some things you do just because you change the course of events. And this mm -hmm. may not be necessarily stable or permanent. It could be just interventions that you do to change something. Yes. But just building on that, there is this, this what, what we may call uh, being creative in supporting others, being creative in supporting the learning and developmental need of others. And this is something all, my, at least most parents in the world know how tough it is to do. And sometimes you never get credit <coughs> for it, right? So if, it, if I just, you just go back, um, uh, just, just, just looking back at your career, um, to what extent do you think there is an appreciation of others for that? In, in your personal life and in your professional life? Because usually what I mean is we tend to associate creativity with uh, color, with motion, I mean society, right? Which is very easy to see. Yes. And uh, all the creative thinking and problem solving, <laughs> yeah. sometimes hours that you put into helping other people develop their own. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, the life skills program had nothing to do with uh, measur measurable results. It was a program that it would m uh, that uh, was designed to help everyone in the bank to deal with everyday difficulties. At the end of this program, we have so many people come and tell us, thank you, thank you so much. You have to change the, the, the name of the program. Don't call it life skills, call it, it changed my life. <laughs> you know, we have so many emails that they are very, very touching. So people, when, when someone comes and tells me how much we helped him to change direction in his life, to see things in a different way, to cope with difficulties, this is a reward for me. <coughs> when uh, 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 last year, in the beginning of 2013, I, uh, I announced the program within the bank. And I received 1,300 participations. Of course, we could not uh, cover all these uh, participations within one year because we have only two trainers that they run the program. But uh, it was overwhelming, really. So, uh, and something else that it was very, very interesting is that the, uh, my manager, the head of HR in Eurobank, support this uh, uh, approach, this different approach, because we are working in the bank. In the beginning, uh, everybody in my team thought when we will go with this uh, proposition, the answer will be no. But the program was embraced from everyone. 
And now everybody is proud of this program in the bank. So I guess the, the larger question is why do things, if I can just uh, generalize more, why do things have to come to a point, to the boiling point, of uh, things turning really bad and people are uh, experiencing a great deal of stress and anxiety to, to be able to introduce something like that? Uh, can it's you repeat the question? question what, what? Why would you need to come to 2009, 2010, 2011? Ah, really okay, because we never thought about it before. My question is why? Can you explain it? Or what is it that we can learn about just doing some of these things? I'm talking about the future. Yes, in our uh, in more proactive yes a, a lesson could be that uh, uh, difficult things is opportunity to do mm. uh, different things, innovative and creative things. Because we never thought before that uh, we need a program like that. But right now, definitely, if you are asking me, even uh, if the crisis uh, will be over, we need Still creativity in our lives, yes, okay. definitely. Please. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask you, since you are in the training sector, uh, what, the, what are the best training programs or other sorts of actions that a business uh, can follow in order to increase creativity uh, in its employees? Hmm. Okay. Well, I think, uh, first of all, in each organization, we have to have uh, a learning plan per position. Decide for every role what kind of programs everyone should have. First, for the role, because uh, creativity is fine, but first of all, we have to make sure that uh, we know uh, our job very well. We have the skills and the knowledge to be uh, successful in our everyday goals and tasks. Programs that they boost creativity are uh, programs like uh, team events, uh, team building events, uh, programs that the one I described, a anything out of the box that we can do and um, I think, and m maybe uh, Babis can um, help me with that, that ri right now, when uh, I was doing a research in the internet, I find out that the future of the training is games. Learn with games. This is the future for the training. Not, uh, you know, PowerPoint presentations, okay, can all plays, okay, can some activities, uh, let's uh, talk with each other, let's make a, a small presentation, but uh, play and learn. Mm -hmm. So, so, so learning for a creative process. That's yes, a yes, play. yes. Uh, and I think uh, this is something that, uh, you know, fascinates me. And I would like very much to bring something to Greece that has to do with that. Yeah, play and learn. So creativity there definitely <coughs> is needed. I would like to ask you something, uh, something more uh, relating to the, uh, the first project you described. How could we make the work environment more enjoying for employees? Um, you saw this uh, this opportunity and you you built on it. How can we persuade our human resources uh, <laughs> management, the company we work? They must pay attention to this. The environment must be more uh, uh, playful and entertaining. And uh well, I think uh, that uh, they must understand that if people are happy uh, uh, at the office, then they are more productive, and they have innovative ideas, and uh, the the performance is uh, mu much, much, mu much better. So you have to sell it. You have to sell this idea. So let's talk, let's talk a little bit about this, about this idea of selling ideas, right? About the <coughs> politics of creativity, because okay. uh, here, you know, you, you have this experience working in a large, established company, a company that, by definition, you know, banks and banking groups in general need to have formal procedures and controls. So uh, when new ideas come, uh, I guess it's not always easy 
It's not easy at all. So any, any insights you would like to share about the politics of innovation? In, uh okay. Uh, uh, one tip I can give you is uh, whenever I go with a new idea to my manager, I'm very well prepared. I don't have only the idea in my head. I, I have already design in my head and sometimes I have a small presentation of how this project will work, uh, what resources do I need, what the outcome will be, what is happening around us, uh, why I think this uh, would be an excellent idea and what are the benefits for the organization, for the people, for us, for the HR. I, I, I don't go just with an idea. I go with everything ready. When I went uh, with the life skills program idea to the head of HR in Eurobank, the program was ready. I saw to them one program which it was uh, ready 100%. I decided to make uh, the effort with my team to design the program, to find the activities, to uh, find all the resources. And then uh, we create a small presentation and I ask the head of the department to give me one hour because I wanted to present something new. So when we went there, we were ready to uh, present from A to Z a solution. And we were ready to answer any question and fight for it. And we left, well, then go ahead. And something, uh, and something else I would like to add. Uh, because that program was so different for everyone, uh, for everything else, when I went to my manager, I had a proposition regarding the launching of the program. So I told her that I don't want to announce the program the, the regular way we do we announce a program through the internet and we get participations. I told her that I was prepared to invite one by one participants that I know they are positive thinkers in the bank and then the word of mouth will do the job and that's what we did. The first uh, two three groups were, participa uh, ha were having participants, uh, people that I knew that they were very very positive and open to new ideas. I called them by myself I told them that I have something new, I want you to evaluate it. Uh, your opinion is very, very important. And uh, after the two uh, groups, everybody knew about the program and they were come to us for uh, asking to participate and not us to ask them to participate. Uh, we have people in class, you know, come not only from Greece, we have people here who come from, from uh, Nigeria, uh, from Spain, from Lebanon, from Russia. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. Uh, so you, many, most of, many of these countries actually you have some experience. But here's what I was thinking. You, uh, I, I just listened to you talking about positive psychology and positive workplaces, Seligman and um, all this field, which, of course, in a culture like the American culture, which tends to be more extroverted and more... Uh, positive, I can see how that plays out, but we live in another part of the world and the Eurobank room has been active in several of these countries that you could say were not as positive or perhaps would tend to be more cynical. So would you like to, to give us some ideas about how that plays out when you go to people and uh, to tell them, well, let's have fun, let's make it more positive. Uh, well, you don't, you don't say to anybody, let's make uh, you know, be positive <laughs> and then you'll be happy. Uh, what we did through the program is uh, to show them who, uh, with uh, uh, videos, with uh, different activities, that if we want, we can, ch we can change our habits and if we change our habits, we can change the way we think. Because toxic feelings, for example, can be uh, can affect our physical and psychological life. If you if we learn to deal with negativity, 
to manage change and we can teach our brain to do that, then we can change things. So through the program we use so many examples to show just that. One of them is uh, the experiment uh, Helen Langer did with, uh, I don't know if you know this experiment, uh, many years ago, I think in 1975, if I remember well, <coughs> she uh, took uh, 25, 30 old people, maybe 75 years old, 70 something anyway, and uh, for a week he uh, put them in a hotel where everything inside the hotel was uh, designed to be 20 years before the time, let's say 1955. The music, the, uh, the TV, uh, uh, newspapers, uh, uh, everything, the furniture, everything took them 20 years before the time. So just in, w in one week, old people they had a better blood pr pressure. <laughs> yes, Th they could. Th their eyes <laughs> were much better. They c they, c they could read without glasses. They could, uh, you know, move their own suitcases just in one week. Because their brain started to think that they were younger. <coughs> so this is one of the experiments we share with our participants uh, in the program to make them understand, yes, if we want, we can change things. And of course, we give them a lot of tools of how they can do it. You know that, uh, you know, to, um, uh, to have a new habit, you need how many? 20, 28 days to do it over and over again every Still day. The old one. Yes, and then you have a new habit. So some of us, uh, we have, uh, we are used to uh, think negative for everything. So we can teach ourselves to be more positive. Th this is some, you know, tips we are giving them in the program. Any other questions, please? Um, actually, the, the concept of the bank as it is, it's uh, the culture, let's say, of the organization, uh, as far as I can understand it, something very strict, something very precise, something very organized with processes, uh, yes. uh, operational, right. uh, the operational level, I mean, at least it's very bureaucratic. Uh, having these programs in, uh, in the bank sector, uh, it's, uh, it affects a little bit the culture of the company, the culture of the organization, because it's not used to changing, as you said before. Uh, do you believe that it is easier to change or it's a process of changing the future of the banking sector? It's, uh, it's something that others ought to do as well? Or is it something that it's, I don't know, uh, well, it's happening now and it's not going to be, it's going to be very reluctant on the change part from the... No, no, I, I can tell you that in our bank, uh, after uh, this experience, we are ready to go to the next step because people now they are more open uh, to new ideas to innovative training programs so the hard part wor uh, was to do the first step now we are ready to do new things they, they are expecting from us to do new things they're asking us what is next and people that already participated in a life skills uh, they are asking for a follow-up program. They are asking for something similar to that. So, if, if it would be accurate, <laughs> please correct me if it's not. It's just that you, know, you may have uh, distinct projects, project A, project B, but in your mind these things are connected. Are connected as catalysts toward bringing about uh, um, a lar la large-scale change, right? Yeah, uh, yeah that, that's correct. Mood I, and I, I, can, I can talk about uh, dozens of different projects. I just uh, chose to discuss with you tonight this particular uh, two projects, which I love them both very much. Uh, let's okay. uh, please. Sorry for the second question, but I just can't help not ask. 
uh, given the fact that, as Mike said, and of course your answer that you are already some steps forward. So now, if I understand well, your uh, group is accepting some newcomers, yes. which might not be having the same culture as the yes. employees that already exist yes. have. Uh, is this a new challenge? Do you have already some ideas? Have you put on paper something like uh, to, to bridge any kind of differences or? Uh well, first of all, uh, we have to learn the systems, products, to be able to work together. So uh, in a mer during a merger, uh, the first priority is this. But I'm really, really anxious, and I think the people are too, uh, when we finish with all that, and it, it will take us at least six or seven months uh, to introduce to them uh, a different approach towards training. And uh, when um, I have newcomers, they come in the training center for uh, the system training, uh, I do a presentation for the group. So in this presentation, uh, we have a section where we discuss ab about our uh, training programs. And one of the main things we are telling them is that, first of all, that the bank uh, is uh, determined to um, um, I forgot the word. Uh, invest, to invest, to invest in people all the time, yeah, a banker. <laughs> 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 Invest in people all the time. Even during the crisis, Eurobank never stopped to invest in people. Uh, last year, we had 75% of our people participating in the training programs within 2013. 75 something percent. And uh, almost four days per person in training. So uh, I share with them how we work in our training department and what uh, uh, different programs we have. And I know they are eager to participate and uh, you know get to know everything. And I really look forward to it. Yes. Yes. Uh, just two questions. Okay. The first one, um, you read a book on positive psychology, and then um, it gave birth to the Life Skills Project, to say. Um, I think the earlier speaker who spoke on about reading something different, that it often helps creativity. Okay, for the creative ideas you've introduced to Eurobank, apart from these two, what are other effective ways? What other? Effective, effective ways you've adopted in generating these creative ideas, apart from reading. That's the first question. Okay. Well, I don't think they are a specific way of uh, how you can get an innovative idea. You know, sometimes when you sit down, you sit down with friends and you are discussing things, and, and and someone says something which is, you know, probably irrelevant with the subject. And then you can get an idea of two different things. I don't think it's a way that I can describe how innovative ideas come to me. Yeah, I don't know. You have to think out of the box. You know, don't, don't think always, you know, what is the process, what we're supposed to do. Uh, you have to have an open mind to see things uh, with an open, I think that this, this is the answer, an open mind. Okay, then about the major you just spoke about, the, ma that? the major between the two parties. Major. Major. Uh, major, okay. Okay, um, we've learned some that most majors usually fail, especially when it comes to cultural integration. Mm -hmm. So what's your unit doing about this? Yeah. He's, he's absolutely right about the stats. <laughs> Uh, usually, uh, the cultural integration part merges yes. the terribly. Well, uh, we are in in the beginning of the merger. Okay, um, what we try to do 
is uh, to make people uh, feel like their home that we really all of us want to become one bank not two different banks we d we we don't have we don't want to have two different cultures because we all have the same goal to our bank to be strong again and to go very very quickly back to the private sector so right now because every bank in Greece faced many many difficulties I think w all of us work towards the same uh, goal we're not going to have so many difficulties as mergers had in the past <coughs> and I add something from that. Please. Uh, and, and I believe uh, mainly from the difficult part will be from the tough, tough uh, part. But I believe that they already formed the team uh, to smoothly integrate yes, uh, their yes, employers. Yes, yes, with of course. Yes. I believe Miss Carlato is there, uh, uh, if I'm not sure. Uh, from tough, tough. So. Yeah, it I is very positive that they are trying already to, uh, uh, to smoke what, can I, what can I say from my part? Uh, because I already uh, seen people come uh, to the training center. Uh, I see that they are colleagues with a very good attitude. They are very willing to learn and they are very, very positive. And uh, in order to help them uh, adjust, let's say, to the new environment, the trainers that they are uh, teaching the systems and the products, n they're not from Eurobank. They are from both banks. In every classroom, we have trainers from Taf Taf and Eurobank. And of course, training department. I don't know if our director of executive education, Marina Grilaki, who is, by the way, she's with us, she's joining us tonight. I don't know if you have a question because I know the two of you have shared a wonderfully uh, colorful re relationship, uh, relationship and true. very productive over the years. Yes, that's which true. Which makes me think, uh, Marina is someone who is so important about so many things that we have done in this school and we do. And, uh, um, and so it brings me back to, to the whole idea that sometimes relationships that actually Well, well, well the link I received uh, f uh, regarding positive psychology was from Marina. Not surprising. <laughs> She's probably with so many things, but makes me think that sometimes uh, even th we need these relationships, right? Uh, that inspire you and support you. And, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes the if you have relationships that are proper, always proper and professional, and, and somehow they're very linear, uh, sometimes I feel that this may be less fruitful than something sometimes a bit shaky. I, 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 I agree, abs absolutely. Every time Marina comes in my office, uh, we have so many ideas to discuss and probably for new programs, for, for new things to do, you know, the ideas are flowing around us. <laughs> She's a very creative person, Marina. Is, is, is Oleka an easy person to work with? No, she's <laughs> a very <laughs> difficult person to work with. The first experience, it was with you, remember, Leaders of Development, NAFPLI of 2008, 9? What was it? Seven. The fir seven. Seven. Eight. 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 It I, I went through hell with Oleka. Wow. <laughs> she's a perfectionist. She, was ev she wants everything to be perfect. But then, you know, we, we floated to paradise together. <laughs> <laughs> So in 20 years, perhaps all of us would get in a hotel and remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let me see if we have a couple of more questions before uh, before we go anything else. Please. Please. Uh, one question about the positive uh, psychology program. Uh, do you have any demographic participants? Are there more women than men, or is there a balance? Are there younger people more than older? Everybody. Everybody. So there is a kind of balance, right? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in the beginning, we thought, too, that probably more women would participate in the course, but no, everybody, yeah. Okay, one last question, please. Okay, um, did the project take place during the working hours or after free time? The final work project? 
the projects were taking place during the working hours? What, the life skills, working hours. The fun at work project, it was both. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why they were happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we were saying that's a good point, that fun at work took place outside. And, in, and, and at the office too, the both. Office, okay. no. Yes. You mentioned uh, too, many time, too many times during uh, your presentation that uh, to think always out of the box. Uh, although I'm an advocate of, uh, of uh, this opinion, maybe many times the solution could be within the box. What? It might be. Yes, it might be. <laughs> Bureaucracy and fixed procedures uh, leads to somehow to some results that uh, uh, you know, uh, may, may, maybe many times they're tangible. And, uh, yeah, it, it might be. I, I don't say no. Uh, what I try to say is when I face uh, a difficult problem, usually I try to think out of the box. And most of the times I find solutions that they were uh, innovative, solutions that... Uh, were very, sac you know, successful. So I believe that, honestly. Okay, there is something that I actually think would be helpful for us, that, you know, if we go back, uh, say, to, to the early 90s, late, late 80s, here in Greece, talking about creativity and fun at work, talking about uh, training and human resource, and all of these things uh, was something, I mean, come on, all right? So we've come a long way since that time. That's true. Uh, many of these folks have... Uh, 25, 35 year, years of career ahead of them. So in your gut feeling Definitely. and your experience, what do you think is going to be? Because I don't know, I hope you can re it resonates with you. These things have changed a lot in yes. the last 20 years. Yes. And probably if you look ahead in yes. the next 20 years, yes. uh, what is your gut feeling? What do you think would be so different in the ways we work, in uh, the way our work culture here in Greece is going to evolve? Is well. it going to evolve as much as it has <laughs> the last 20 years? I really can't imagine because if you ask me if I could imagine 25 years when I was before, when I was in New York, what would happen in my career, I would never, never imagine anything about it. I, I don't know. I think, I think sometimes, well, back to the basics, maybe it's, uh, it's something we should uh, see. We don't have to find always new, different, innovative ideas. We have to explore what we have today, how we can do it in a different way today, and uh, to learn uh, lessons from our day uh, experience activities. So the future would be better, colorful. I don't know. Well, as far as training is concerned, I told you. Uh, I, uh, I think that uh, we go learn, the, learn with the more playful way. Which yes, it's a natural way to learn of learning. Yes, so that's clearly back yes. to the basics. Yes, but in your personal story, back to the basics is is, is it going back to math and gymnastics? Has it been uh, math and gymnastics all along? No, <laughs> uh, no. Um, well, probably if you ask me to come uh, again next year, I will tell you what I will do for myself for 2014. So uh, I'm having, you know, a lot of ideas in myself. I don't want to share them with you yet because I'm not ready to. But uh, definitely this year will be for me. 2014? Yes. OK. That's a big de declaration, so thank you. <laughs> yes. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing with us. We look forward to <laughs> the next Thank you.